He straight up cuckooed that dude, bro. Oh my God. He's got all your Charger gear on because- I look good. I got big energy every day. Let's go! And he is dicked. Blind squirrel finds an every once in a while. That's right. You have to love what you're seeing on tape if you're a Chargers fan, especially for the future with Justin Herbert. On the move and throws and touchdown. Players, coaches, staff, fans, together, we can create something truly special. Stay tuned for some good content. <laughs> well, hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the Charger Chat. I'm your co-host, Wooldog, sitting with my buddies, Kev Hug and Duggan. Back in the saddle again. <laughs> Let's not forget Kyle the Coach Duggan. I want to kiss you all all over over and over over and again. again. I want (laughs) to kiss you all over. (laughs) Sorry, ladies. Sorry. Sorry, ladies. They're married, but we're over here. <laughs> He's still playing the field. So He's willing to kiss you all over. Yeah, That's right. <laughs> and again. <laughs> uh, from the 20-yard line down. Anyways, uh, <laughs> welcome back to the Charge of Chat. Uh, boy, we've got uh, much more to talk about, folks. There's still lots of free agency moves happening. Uh, it's been exciting. Uh You know, because again, we're not seeing these splashy moves. I think our splash has already kind of happened uh, unless we pick up anybody later on down the line on the cheap, uh, which isn't out of the question. It's certainly very possible, but we are picking up some great names. But before we get into that, let's look at the NFL around the league. Uh, Right now, as we've mentioned in some of previous episodes, that the NFL has been looking to expand to 17 games as opposed to the regular 16 is what we've been using. Uh, And as Adam Schefter uh, tweeted and pointed out, the league has played a 16 game regular season schedule since 1978. So right now that is the longest stretch without a change in NFL history, Uh, which was surprising because I guess uh, we also heard from Papa Duggan weighing in on what we talked about last week with Herbert uh, setting the record uh, for quarterback within 16 games, not realizing that there was once a point in time where it was what 14 games, 15 games, something much more. Yeah. So there's, there's a lot of asterisks. Yeah. We're continuing to grow yeah. and we're not considering our own asterisks that yeah. we didn't get to watch. And he's technically a 15 game asterisk, technically not a, not a 16. That's so. true. Yeah. That's a hundred percent right. Yeah. One. So yeah, it's, it's a dude. I'm just, we get another football game and not only that we get uh-huh. another home football game. Cause yeah, right now year. they're going right. to play the Vikings. So in season SoFi. ticket holders, Choo-choo. you know what? You know what? If you, look, if you look through this list, guess what you see? You see the Rams? They're not playing at home on that 17th game. The Chargers mm. get more games this year. The Chargers get Too more bad, games. Too bad. So year. sad, Rams. Suck it. One more game for the Chargers. Chargers. So that's right. So as we've uh, mentioned before, the Chargers will be playing a home game against the Vikings if all this happens. Again, it's nothing is official yet, but it is certainly looking that way that we will be going to a 17 game season as soon as this upcoming season. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that as it develops, uh, see if any other news comes out about it. In other news with the team, uh, I guess Justin Herbert is now being active on social media. He hasn't uh, in years prior, but now he has his own Instagram (laughs) account and Boy, he's taking some gorgeous looking well, photos out dude, there. Dude, like he usually posts like him <laughs> golfing and stuff, but he sh- he posted a picture of him like dropping back like this awesome crossover with like a He's like lens floating, flare. no feet on the ground. Yeah, he's levitating. Oh, that's true, yeah. <laughs> Our boy is levitating. His shadow isn't practice. touching his feet. That's crazy. <laughs> it's it's honestly this is getting he's too like much. Pizza like, pan. I'm so excited. Like the draft is close. <laughs> we're getting closer on this stuff. Like I'm just, seeing him post this means like we're getting back into football. Like we've had like a little break. Right. But now we're getting back. We've in. seen him play golf, and now we're finally seeing him like playing football again. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> well, when we talked about it on previous episodes, there was that schedule as far as like when coaches can finally start working with right. the players and start hashing things out. And because Staley is a new coach, we get that extra bit of time. So yeah, I think we're starting to see a little bit more uh, football related uh, urgency at least happenings. Yeah, yeah totally. for, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, so great. Good to see Justin Herbert out there working on the field, uh, in all of his, uh, lens flare glory and, uh, looking at some of the pickups, we picked up another free agent, a Kyler Fackrell. I don't okay. know. Fackrell. I like Fackrell. this guy. I like his name because this is a very, very much a Phil Rivers vibe. Like I'm sure Phil has wanted to say, F- 
before, but didn't say f- it fact. <laughs> so this feels ah, like a nice fact. Ah, fact. Ah, so we got a we got a fa- we got a Kyler Fackrell, and I don't know if you guys watched. Uh, he honestly, I did not know who he was really, and he showed up. No. You know, people started There's posting no videos. To. Dude, he had one mm-hmm. one of his um, seasons with the Packers. He had a ten and a half yeah. sacks. Like he's right. capable. Crazy. So you know, hundred percent. And I think last year the. Um, you know, the, the Rams played against uh, him and the Giants, and he had one of his better games against the Rams, so that might have caught um, Staley's attention a little mm. bit. Yeah, and mm. I think um, if you knew who Kyler Fackrell was, hit us up in the comments because you are a true NFL fan. Yeah. That's impressive. <laughs> um, but yeah, after doing some um, homework on him, the guy's solid, and I, what I think is the biggest pickup is he's a huge special teamer. Yeah. Um, he has mm. so much experience oh, true, on yeah. special teams. Um, and that's what those guys do. He obviously adds depth to the outside linebacker position, which we desperately need moving into this mm-hmm. new um, uh, style of defense. Um, he, he, he's not a pro bowler. Um, that's not how you make a good football team. Yet. You need guys like Kyler Fackrell <laughs> on your team to make a complete team. You didn't have to break the bank to get him. And he's a solid pickup that's going to do his job and and be pretty consistent with the potential of one of those 10 to 12 sack seasons which would uh, be especially huge. when you're playing across when you're playing on the same side him joey bosa and him or whoever it might be uh uchen and Uwosu, like we have we're adding some weapons i think um the flash the 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 big flash spending was offensive line and these we're gonna have we're gonna need some solid key free agency pickups like this that don't get anyone excited when you see the alert on your phone you're kind of like who like, who's that cool but then you mm-hmm. look at him like, oh, that makes sense. It totally makes sense. We need special yep. teams help. We need depth at the outside linebacker. 100%. And like you said on the cheap, uh, apparently there's a Dan Duggan. I love different it. Different spelled last name. I Dan pulled it Duggan. out. I pull, there's a few people that reported on this. I pulled his because his name is pretty sweet. Mm-hmm. So Dan Duggan uh, tweeted out what the amount of money that we were going to be paying Mr. Fackrell. And uh, boy, one year, $1.5 uh, with 500,000 guaranteed, 250,000 in incentives. If we can get a guy doing anywhere close to 10 sacks a season and only paying him 1.5 mil, nuts. shut your mouth when you're talking to me about that. <laughs> <laughs> he, was a, he was a Packer. And it, it, I don't I don't know what's happening, but we're becoming like the Notre Dame Packers. Like we're I the said West last Coast week. Packers, dude. Yeah. yeah, he's like... I don't know what Blog is doing, but Brian Blog Iowa is doing some serious recruiting, getting Iowa. all the boys out there. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Cook, Lindsley, love it. Fackrell. It's, we're just the 2018 Packers. That's fine. I, yeah, I, I'm I'll not take against it. that. I'll take it. <laughs> so, yes, great, uh, great pickup in free agency. And then another pickup in free agency. Uh, we talked about it a bit last week as far as uh, picking up another quarterback. Uh, we all. Uh, I, we we could see the pros and cons of it. We didn't really know which way to like fully plant our flag as far as, you know, should we or shouldn't we? But they made the decision for us. Uh, we picked up a veteran quarterback, uh, one that we are familiar with, uh, especially in the playoff season, uh, Mr. Chase Daniel uh, coming on over from the Detroit Lions. Again, another cheap ass deal, man. 1.5 million uh, to pay this guy to help Herbert to... Uh, do something to cheer him on the sideline. I don't know. What do you think about this? I think it's a, you're definitely getting kind of some experience. The The thing that's interesting for me about him is when I first moved to Missouri, he was the starting quarterback for Mizzou. So I saw him. <laughs> Kevin play is league. not a fan of any Mizzou quarterback. So here's if the thing. Out of all ep- the ones that I watched to this, this, this channel at all, you know that Kevin is not a fan. Of I Mizzou don't like Locke. I don't like Gabbert. Those guys suck. But I think Chase Daniel out of those three that I saw. <laughs> but this guy might change was the this guy. But I'm still not that impressed. But he's a now, I, so. Dude, I'm just I'm shamelessly <laughs> positing if this so hard, but I'm, I hope he never sees the fields because I still like Easton stick more. But one of the most interesting things about this guy's and uh, Warren Sharp tweeted, okay, so Chase Daniels career is biblical. An undrafted quarterback who made $38 million for five starts in 12 seasons. He won only two of those games. He averaged 6.5 <laughs> yards per attempt. He has one less interception than touchdowns and has been sacked oh 26 times and has and he's not done yet. He's going to the Chargers. <laughs> like 
Okay, so if you're going to oh keep a guy God. around, he, he, dude, I'm spinning it shamelessly positive, so just hang in there. So if you're going to keep a guy around this long, who's clearly not the most amazing when he gets in the game, he's not winning all the games, he's not, you know, he's a lot of interceptions, like, he must be doing something behind the scenes that, you know, they like. And you're clearly looking at mm -hmm. Lombardi, because he had experience with him in um, right. Detroit, like, he has some experience. So when you look at it, it makes sense. Like, at this point, we're really all about supporting Herbert, whether it be getting new offensive line, whether it be whatever we're doing is to support Herbert. So there must be some kind of thought that he can do something to help him. Um, and I feel bad for Easton Stick. Yeah, do you guys feel like this is the sign of the end for Easton Stick? I mean, he's not a rookie anymore. He's been he's the third quarterback his... forever, pretty much. So it's not something right. new. But this, this would, but I, I completely agree. And with the guys that we had previously, you had Tyrod Taylor, and you had a rookie quarterback we drafted in the first round in Justin Herbert. It makes sense why he's he went from the third behind Philip and Tyrod to the third behind Tyrod and Justin. And now they brought in another guy for him to be third again. Is it safe to say that Easton Stick is on the back burner, is kind of on the way out? We might have seen enough. I, I don't think so yet. I, it, it, honestly, he came in, what is it, a one year deal, 1.5 million? Like, I don't really, I don't, mm. I don't see it being like that dire for him yet. We'll find out pretty quick, but I don't think it's that dire yet. I kind of think it is as much as I don't want to say that they, the chargers could easily pick up somebody, you know, undrafted in this next draft and uh, drop Easton stick and pick this person up and have him be the, you know, the next third or the practice squad quarterback, you know, whatever the situation ends up being. Yeah. Um, you know, we got to see, it was funny. I just, I pulled up a clip of like Easton sticks only, you know, couple plays from last season and it was like, that was his opportunity to shine. And he, you know, made a short pass to Mike Williams and then tried to do like a runoff on the side and got tackled behind the line of scrimmage. So it's like, yeah, it wasn't really all too impressive. Again, there's still opportunity in the off season to work with new coaches for them to maybe see some, something from him that, you know, previous coaching staff hasn't seen yet. So, but if I were a betting man, I would probably say Easton stick is but Probably I think not going to be around too much. Either longer. way, they were going to bring in another quarterback. So I don't think it really necessarily says anything that much about Easton Stick. They were going to bring in somebody else. So I think yeah, you know, but we'll find this out. signing, he's clearly the three. Oh yeah, right? clearly and, the right. three. He's he's getting paid almost the same amount. I mean, he's making a million bucks this year, and Daniel's a million five. Yeah. So it's like I don't know. It, it, it's Easton Stick. We're talking about a number three quarterback. Yeah. I think we all we all were rooting for the guy coming out of a uh, small school, and that's when. We had Phil, who we knew was on his way out. And we're like, could this be the next guy? It's clearly not the long term um, option with Justin Herbert. So, yeah. Um, no, I think we were hoping for kind of like a Cinderella tale because he was drafted yeah. so far down in the draft that it was like, right, oh, maybe right. this is an undiscovered gem, somebody that could blossom and, and become something special and just hasn't panned out that way. And now that Justin Herbert's at the helm, there's really no reason to make that hope or attempt. Uh, with Easton Stick, but still love the guy. Glad to have him on the team, and hopefully he sticks around on the practice squad. Uh, let's see, a bit of sour news came out. It's not totally sour yet, but man, we saw, we saw the tweet that Melvin Ingram went to go visit with the Chiefs uh, to see if they could maybe work something out, and uh, he left not finalizing any kind of deal, so at least we've got think that he's going for us, but... I think he's on a recon mission. I think he's going in yeah, there to that, learn as much that's as what he I was can. Gonna say. Yeah. Oh. I wonder what is. I wonder what he like. If, if he had any like ulterior <laughs> motives, like I'm gonna go in here, talk smack to everyone, get a find a playbook and bring it back with me. <laughs> it's like and then like kick Patrick Mahomes, like sack him at uh, on the way out. Melvin he's wearing a wire double O eight, and he's wearing like those gla like really big glasses with like lenses in them, like just kind of yeah, hey yeah. man, you want to come this way? He's like, hold on one second, I gotta yeah. look around this whole room. Yeah. All got right, let's big, go. He's right, got yeah. a big cowboy oh, hat on yeah. with a big lens, <laughs> <laughs> like just not even hiding Dumb it. The old school, like the <laughs> click the push button that takes pictures, like. <laughs> that be, yeah, that's he, the guy. God, that'd be amazing. <laughs> he just does ninety uh, degree turns and click. Click, click, click. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be oh, and then man. he's like, okay, well, yeah, I'm not signing with you guys. See not ya. good. You know, yeah. we're fine. I'm good. I'm gonna go yeah. home. Yeah. This place sucks. I'll think about it. So no moves yet for, for Melvin Ingram and still a possibility that he could come back with the Chargers. You know, we're never not, say never. Uh, 
We'll never say never. When I mean, we just we got to wait and see what happens. You know, there's still so much time in the off season to see who ends up going where. Uh, it's not totally out of the realm of possibility just yet. Okay, now it's time to move on over into Coach's Corner. And we've got a little something spicy cooked up to get us into there. Let's hear it. Great moments are born from great opportunity. All comes down to today. You take this helmet and you put it right in his numbers, okay? I want to see nothing but snot bubbles in his nose. A lot of people want to blame coaches for a lot of things. Nobody puts coaches <laughs> trade up. And we shut them down because we can't. It's because I believed in you. And I wish I could say something that was classy and inspirational. But it just wouldn't be our style. Let's do it. All right. Yeah, buddy. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> Man, Finally, we Coach has got an intro. Radio show. Boy's got an right. intro. Now let's it. go, Coach. Craig, Craig has his own little segment now with an That's intro. That's right, yeah. So, we did Craig before we did Coach, so <laughs> throw Coach yeah. a bone here. Awkward. Boner. You're up to you. Go for it. I All love right. the rivalry that we're creating <laughs> between me <laughs> <laughs> Craig from Texas, and I even, I even, he reached out to me directly on Twitter this week, and I was like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I don't know what to say. I don't want to. I don't. I, yeah, I love, I love what to have a corner in the first round. <laughs> Never mind. <Yeah. laughs> I love it. Some internal it's rivalry. I love it. Yeah, it's nothing, good. nothing but love. So, all right. So now we, as you heard, we are getting into Coach's Corner. And instead of going to a question, we came across a tweet that uh, piqued our interest because there was a lot of coaching verbiage in here that I looked at it. I went cross-eyed. I passed out on the floor. I woke up five hours later <laughs> and I texted Kyle. I was like, does this make sense to you? And he said, yes. So I'm going to have him break it down. But this was a tweet that came from a Brian Wilson, a.k.a. Fresh Yell Grizzly. Uh, he tweeted, almost five years ago, I emailed Brandon Staley while he was at John Carroll, saw a Glazier clinic of his liked his cover three match stuff won a cif championship as a dc that year ran three match until i couldn't run it anymore coaches share the info pigs get fat hogs get slaughtered so hardcore uh he shared a screenshot of the email so i'm gonna have coach just kind of read through it and and break it down as he comes across different things so what did, what did you see here coach yeah so i'll, I'll kind of read through it i just thought it was cool to hear from our coach, you know, like our new coach that, that is a v kind of skyrocketed to being a head coach. Um, right. He was a quarterback in college. We don't know a lot about what he did, like what his defense, like we, we know that it was successful. We don't know a whole lot about what his defense is all about. Um, so it was cool to see some of the technical things that he talked about because at John Carroll, he was a DB coach. He was a secondary coach. Um, and then all throughout his uh, NFL career, he's been an outside linebacker coach. Um, so it was it was interesting to hear him talk so so in depth about um, defensive back technique. Um, now to to address the three match um, that was referenced in the in the tweet, um, route matching is 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 almost like a way of breaking down the field into segments. So um, your outside linebackers, your corners, and your in your safety kind of work in tandem. And they're almost working, and this is this is only for pass coverage. And run, it's going to look the same. And pass coverage against the pass, uh, route a cover three match or route matching. It's if this guy does this, I'll do this, and you do that. If that guy does that, then we'll do this, and I'll do that. It's almost a way. It, it is a little bit intricate, and it's for me. I haven't found much success coaching it at the high school level. I'm if I had Brandon Staley as a personal. Um, tutor like this guy did <laughs> maybe i would have right. won some more games um but it's 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 a little bit hard because you have to get very familiar and work in tandem with other people really really well instead of saying hey you you defend the flat you defend you have the deep third you have the hook curl it's i have this guy unless he does this and then you have that guy and then i'll sit on this but it, it opens it frees you up to do to be really aggressive because there's certain situations where you don't have anyone and you can just kind of fly around and go make a play. Um, so here's what the email said. And this is what Brandon Staley responded to the guy that tweeted. Um, Glazier is a big national coaches conference. They put it on um, every year. And it's usually college coaches um, and other high school coaches from big programs that kind of come on and do... Um, they do seminars. So they'll they'll go to a, a seminar and you'll go, hey, I want to learn about how to defend the spread out of cover two. And it's like, oh, cool. Brandon Staley from John Carroll is teaching that. Let me go listen. And then he'll have his contact info at the end and you can write it down. And if you have questions, you can reach out to him like, hey, we, we started installing your stuff and I don't know how to do this. Um, and that's what it looks like this email is 
Um, and this is what Coach Staley, Brandon Staley, responded to um, this coach. He said, he gave him the PowerPoint and he said, we teach flat defenders to shuffle to the seam um, because we want to funnel the number two wide receiver to the hook players and middle of the field safety. You want them to understand their help is inside. So he's getting very technical with even how their flat defender, which would be your outside linebacker if you're in a three match, um, that would be your outside linebacker. How he Even how he gets to the flat. They have him shuffle to the seam and force that number two wide receiver or the quote unquote slot. We talked about that last, last week, how Chris Harris is our mm-hmm. slot corner. Right. Um, you shuffle to that slot and force him inside. So that way you're pushing him to the safety or to your hook curl, which is your middle linebacker um, help. So it, it, even just talking like the technique of how they are getting to the um, number two receiver. So very technical. It's, 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 I'm kind of a um, X's and O's um, nerd. So it's fun to hear that stuff. Knowing that it's from coach Staley too is like, right. That's sick. Um, and then uh, he says for the corners, um, we press bail in match. So when they run that match cover, that route matching, um, they come up and show press. Um, and then right before the snap of the ball, the corners will bail out. It's hard for me. It's always been hard to teach press uh, bail. The only guy that I ever, only corner I ever had that did it great was Quentin Meeks because he did everything <laughs> he's a great. NFL and player. NFL. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but he was, he's the one that kind of taught me about press bail. He's like, coach, you want me to bail on this? Like come up and show him bail. I'm like, Sure, dude, give it a shot. <laughs> he, went, he obviously did it perfectly because him and his dad had been working on it. But um, so they come up and show press, and then they bail out because in cover three, everyone knows that the 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 quick hitch to the number one, you can throw it all day, and you'll never be able to defend it. You'll rally up and tackle the guy, but um, a quick ten yard hitch, five yard hitch, whatever kind of hitch to that number one re- number one receiver. If that's the weak spot that and the seams and cover three of the two weak spots. So he says, we press bail and match obviously to take away that quick hitch. Uh, we teach them to push off their outside foot, pivot with their inside foot. That's like, this is more than you would get from a normal college coach. If I went to a glazier clinic and asked a coach, Hey, can I have questions on this? How do you do it? He's not going to give you this kind of detail. This is, this is a, a sign of coach daily loving football and wanting to, to, pass on information that he has. Um, He says, this should get them in a half turn. We want to maintain a three yard cushion. Our back shoulders should be down as much as possible because you don't want too much weight going backward. If the wide receiver gets into your blind spot, we roll over and man turn into the wide receiver. When you roll over, you're losing vision to gain ground on the wide receiver. The number one mistake is rolling over is slowing. It's like, this is, I don't, I don't know. It's he just sounds really like a puppet master, dude. He's like, he sounds like he's yeah. like literally molding the player to move exactly the way he wants them to move by, by manipulating their technique. Yeah. And that's the, that's one of the hardest parts in coaching is there's a lot of great athletes that know how to do it, but don't know how to coach it. Um, And, and that's maybe one of the things that coach Staley has going for him is he didn't play defense. So for him, he has to watch and see, Oh, well, when this guy, pivots with this foot and drops this shoulder. It helps him get into better technique. Whereas a guy that's an all pro corner going back to coach is like, what the hell are you doing? Just <laughs> cover Just the turn guy. and go. Why, this is not, <laughs> yeah. Well, what are you thinking about? Um, so I, I thought when you sent me this out, I was like, wow, that's, I just love, I would love to have coach Staley do a glazier clinic now as the, the chargers head coach. And, just talk like technique stuff. That's, that's just, that's awesome to see big time. Well, you breaking it down like that, that just got me so excited. You being able to, I mean, not only understand it, uh, but to be able to understand it and explain it to the effect of the guy just loves football and yeah. really understands it and knows it. And, and he's now the coach of our team. Like, yeah. That's so exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. cool. It's so cool that he's like, and that he's also so sh- shortly removed from college football. Like he's, it's interesting mm-hmm. that you still have contacts like that. Like Staley yeah, was helping you with this ago, email. Five years ago, he was yeah. reaching out to a high school coach to help him with how <laughs> exactly. to run. Exactly. Look match. where he is now. So I think it, that's, that's awesome. I love it. That's really cool. Well, thank you, Kyle, for explaining it for both myself and anybody else that uh, saw that tweet or that uh, Reddit post and was just like, huh? Hey. 
and <laughs> couldn't quite uh, make heads or tails out of any of it. So uh, awesome to hear, awesome to read. And now we're going to move on over to uh, what would typically be an interview. And it still is an interview, but uh, we're, we're guessing things up over here at Charger Chat. So this was now going to be our Bolt Insight. And uh, Kevin's got a great one lined up. Let's hear what it sounds like. All right, guys, we are back with a really fun interview today. Today we have the one and only, my dad. What's up, Papa Duggan? Much. How you doing? Good, man. So this is Dave. This is uh, Kyle and my dad, and we are going to ask him some questions today. So, all right, Dad. So what are your thoughts on our offseason so far? Well, I, I like it for the most part. Uh, the only part I don't like, which uh, got me in trouble with the uh, Charger Chat crew, was uh, <laughs> Hayward. Uh, everybody was calling me Negative Nancy, Negative Nancy. No, I just think that leadership, the, what he brought was massive. And what I really think occurred now is he just created another hole that he has to fill. Uh, I think you guys talked a little bit about it last last show and it's just another need now. It's it's another need versus having a need that didn't really need to be addressed, could have, but didn't really need. And I didn't think they saved that much money. So the question too is like, what are you gonna do in free agency? Like all the guys that are available, it seems like a step to the side, step to the right, step to the left. There's no real like we're gonna get a guy that's better for the you know money we were paying Hayward. So it's kind of like a, a knee the north situation. It makes me think, does um, Coach Staley just really want to move on to a different style of cornerback. Uh, whether it be style, yeah, probably. You know, I mean, you'd have to say maybe he wants the six one, six two, long, you know, player that can get hands on. I, I'm not, I'm not quite sure, but you're right in that uh, it has to be a player issue because it can't be a, a personality issue, it can't be a leadership issue. Yeah, it has to be a, a sheer play style. But I, I, you know, you look around, I just don't see that many that different. That are going to, like you said, they're going to plug and play, and oh my gosh, the the it's going to ramp up the capability sets, and and I just I just like you said, there's so much. You guys have all said there's so much to be done with the offensive line and different aspects of the team uh, that uh, um, I think that, that 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 was just one that bothered me. You know, I just didn't like it. Yeah. Um, everything else is what he does, man. You know, it's you guys call him ninja star thrower or whatever yeah, you guys are thinking. T- Tommy T the ninja. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja you know, Tommy. He's, he's, he's doing his thing. I mean, um, so you know, you got to hope for the best on, with, with that situation. We can't, we can't do it all. They're not blowing big money like it's been thrown around um, and damaging the team. And and I heard it on today where they said that the key times to win is either on quarterback friendly deals like Brady's always done, or the young, you know, first four years like they did with Mahomes. And luckily, you, you know, it looks like we have a quarterback that's going to be able to maximize our potential in that first four years. So yeah. that's great. That's exciting. So, so all right. Well, speaking of quarterbacks, like I remember last year, I'm going to admit it because I admit it every time because it was the worst take I ever had. It was like I wanted to, uh, I didn't want Herbert. I'm, just, I have to say it because it was the the truth. But you were the one person that was like, we're going to go get that Herbert guy. Like, how did you know we were going to get Herbert? Like, what did you see? You know, I I watched a lot of the the uh, shows on quarterback reviews. You know, they have a lot of those camps now, and uh, San Diego is a big spot for those. So you get a lot of extra information with regards to, you know, what quarterbacks were with what kid. They usually are down here. You know, it's, yeah, it's, the training it's down there. Yeah. The weather for it. They train down here. And they just kept talking about uh, this Herbert kid and that he was going to – his arm was off the charts. Uh, his, his, his How quick he read the field. You know, I kind of refer to it as – and I'm not going to give him any, you know, bonus points because uh, he's not doing the interview. But Coach Kyle, when he coaches, he sees broad view. He doesn't see tight view. And they were talking to Herbert like that, where he just he just sees the field really quickly. He was able to react really quickly. And they were just going, this is a guy that somebody's going to miss on, and then somebody's going to be rewarded well. So looking at his size and his height and his ability to run, I just go, you know. And a rocket arm. He, he has arm. all the attributes. Yeah, yeah, he's got all the attributes. He's, he's got everything that today's quarterback has to have. He doesn't have a glaring hole, um, which, of course, that's what coaches are supposed to fix. So. Uh, and we've seen that's what that's what's occurred. Did I know that was going to happen that quickly? Nope, did not. Yeah, uh, but did I think he was. Did I think he was one of the best quarterbacks uh, uh, that I liked? Absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah you a, weren't happy with that either. I got two of blasted on that several I times. know, I, but I'm glad I was wrong because we got the guy we wanted and needed and look at him now. Like, we're building around him. We're not just, uh, you know, floundering out there trying to just pick up the best available. Like, we have people we can target. So, last, like, general question about the, the team is, like, being that you picked Herbert, who do you think we're picking in the first round? Who is the guy that you think we need to go get? And you're probably going to be gonna right because you're usually that, right. Yeah, well, well, I just – you have to kind of follow. Obviously, you want an offensive line. Everybody in, in, in the program wants an offensive line. They went after that and kind of fixed that a little bit so they have a little bit more play. He has always said in every interview I've ever heard him say, I'm taking the best available. Yeah. He says every time. He, he doesn't. You know, uh, if he doesn't trade up or do anything for the, for the kid from Oregon, for the lineman – I, I, you know, Pinnay. I could see him taking one of these wide receivers, man. I, I just no. I know, I know. I, I don't want him to. I'm still a line guy, but I, I just, you know, when you look at some of those guys, I mean, you know, you guys have said that several times that you've talked about uh, that. Uh, you know, he can throw to. He makes everybody look good, right? Well, he can make he guys can make him look good by like Cook, for instance. You know, I think I think Adam has, you know. Timely said, you know, he's he's like an old man, man in football. He's old man years. He's he's yeah. he's gonna have difficulty, right? He's gonna but you know what? You know, and, and I think you also mentioned Gates. You gotta know how to push, how to shove, how to open up windows, and, and that's tremendous for a quarterback. So a good receiver, you know, Williams. Um, they didn't work together, it won't matter. He's gonna put the ball up high and Williams is either gonna make plays or he's not. So uh, that, that's his skill set. So you're telling right? me but, with, with Cook, the the older guys have the tricks. They know how to beat the younger guys. Is that what you're trying to tell me, Pops? I can't tell you how many times I held shorts <laughs> playing basketball my senior year, much less my freshman year. Yeah, I'm, I could piss off a lot of freshmen and uh, sophomores by how I held, and they were pitching to referees all the time. But absolutely, you, you learn you learn a- a aspects of the game, the angles, and, and, you know, I mean, your physical prowess, I mean, you guys are making, like, after 22, you're an old man. You know, twenty three. I mean, I've been. I'm, you guys are killing guys. At twenty. I mean, you're After prime. Twenty two. Who said that? I yeah, didn't I mean, I was going to cut this I, off. My thing was like, I don't want. I don't want any player that's older than our coaching staff. And our our coaching staff averages thirty six years old. I don't want any players over thirty six. That I right, said right. that. I didn't say twenty two or twenty five though. Just get it straight. <laughs> Insinuation was that anybody over twenty five was too dang old to be playing any sport. <laughs> <laughs> You're crazy. Yeah, yeah. You're that's crazy. what I'm hearing from you guys. But, but no, no. But I mean, I just yeah, you know, your 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 prowess is from twenty five to thirty one. You get as you get older, you get stronger. You don't get, you lose your quickness, right? Yeah. So there's that there's that give and take. But you know, the experience is massive. I mean, if I could go back and use my brain to go back and play college basketball again, I'd be in the. I would have been in the NBA. Just, <laughs> just cheap just shots just everywhere. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I'd have been pulling rest shorts down. Oh Who knows? god, but, uh, nice. But I mean, it's just it's just one of those things where I like experience on the team. That was Hayward. I, I, I like that. I like guys that have accomplished and and are good leaders. But uh, no, I mean, I mean, we're so young, which is good. Uh, they can grow together. Again, you guys have said it m- multiple times in the last couple of shows is culture is key. Culture is key. And, you know, New England has culture. Green Bay has culture. Uh, Pittsburgh has culture. Uh, people start to kind of tear it up. But when you go into a program knowing what's expected of you, which is what I hope, you know, Stanley and these guys can bring. Because yeah. that, that's what we've missed for so, so many years. Totally. You know? All right. Well, um, we appreciate you listening to all of our episodes because you always give us good feedback. So this breaks me into my last couple questions. And I asked my fellow podcasters to give me some questions to ask you because they couldn't be here. So from Adam, who's your favorite? Who's my favorite? Yeah. And my you know, daughters. My daughters are my favorite. They're not. That, you, that, that's not the question. You're just like Kyle. <laughs> you, you, we give you a hypothetical. We give you a question and you just totally left field it. Yeah, yeah. That, well, that's what that's what fatherhood is about, man. It's knowing when to go left when you, everybody wants you to go right. And uh, so, what? What? Who is my favorite? The one that agrees with me the most. Fair enough. Always that's the you guess. What that? Guess what you got? A plus. That's the that's the correct answer. Ding right, ding right. ding. You got it. Okay. All right, pops. Thanks so much for coming on. It was awesome talking to you, and uh, we'll definitely talk to you soon. All right, guys. Okay, love you. Bye. Man. Okay, okay, love you. Bye. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I, I I think it goes to show that he prefers Kyle a little bit. Yep. He's talking about how great he is at seeing the field and blah, blah, yep. blah, blah, yep. blah, blah, yep. blah, blah, yep. blah, 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 bl
I think he should be appreciating both hugging and myself. The elders. The two oldest. Yeah, we're the, the oldest ones on this podcast. Well, so. you, you oldies should know more about seeing the field than the young buck over here. <laughs> Listen. I shut up, Kyle. Football. I'm not. <laughs> shut, listen. Shut up. Kyle. Shut your mouth. <laughs> I'm going to tell Respect you. Respect your elders. Shut your mouth. Shut mm. your mouth. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, great, great insight uh, from Papa Doug, and I think that's. Uh, I, I just. I think that's a great uh, perspective. You know, boy, I hate that he called a wide receiver man. That just like. The Dagger thing that would what's man. stressing like, me out a little bit though is like he's uh, he's freakishly right most of the time with yeah, these kinds of decisions. I know that's what picks. scares me. Like, so I'm not it, mad that he picked it. I'm mad that he picked it, and he's well, so could very let's, well be let's, right. Let's take <laughs> let's your take money the on Jalen Waddle. Let's take the DeLorean back for a hot second because he told me Justin Herbert that, and I was the same way I'm feeling saying right now about a wide receiver. I'm like, yep. no, I don't want that. You're wrong, Dad. It's Dad, not going to happen. But maybe the wide receiver is the thing we need. I don't know. I, you I'm a lost man. You can't rule it out at this point. Yeah, yeah we, we've, we've, had, we've seen too many just, where it's been. We're just two kids that their dad said wide receiver, and now we're all in on wide receiver again. Yeah. Now we're, who needs a left tackle? Who cares? Easily manipulated. We're... <laughs> Dad, no, it. it's not that we're easily manipulated. I'm just, I know that it's not my decision. So I can't yeah. be upset when the decision happens because it's like I didn't have any sway over the matter. The truth of best, best available is valid. Like that's what Telesco always says. He's going to take the best available in mm -hmm. the first round. And we've seen it time and time again. Um, I, oh God, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I hope, I hope the best available is the left tackle. I hope something happens. Pin A or Slater falls to us at 13. Or we move up, and the best available is Penne Sewell sitting there all pretty, and him and Justin Herbert just get to embrace on draft day <laughs> in their little Oregon duck outfits. Yeah. <laughs> so sweet. Oh, it's so cute. Just a little duck out. Quack, quack. Quack, quack. Uh, quack. All right. Well, quack. we'll, we'll Dude, see what happens. Dude, we'd have to bring back, we'd, we'd definitely have to bring back the Mighty Ducks chant. Oh, quack. The, quack. the flying wing. Quack. The quack. flying V. Quack, 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 quack. Yeah. quack. quack. <laughs> Quack, quack. Yeah, pretty much. Ah. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Uh, Dave's already calling it wide receiver. Didn't mention specifically which wide receiver. I guess which the best available one that falls to us is what we How have dare to you, look Dave. forward to. We'll see what happens. But all right, now we get out of our Bolt Insight and we move on over to Fan Focus. And we lined up a guy that has been one of our favorite names that has showed up at this church <laughs> chat podcast. He so much comedy just from his name. And it's, uh, I don't think he will disappoint. Let's turn it on over to Fan Focus. All right, guys, we are here with another Fan Focus, and we are very incredibly lucky to have the one and only Touch of Phallus on our Fan Focus. What's up, Touch of Phallus? Hogan, I'm good, mate. How are you? I'm doing good, man. So, all right, you're from Sydney, Australia. How did you become a Charger fan in Sydney. So, a uh, bit of a long story. So, um, I'm a big, I'm a big sports guy. Um, love sport, but I don't have an Australian team of anything really. Uh, my local team, the North Sydney Bears, uh, in the rugby league competition down here, uh, they got merged with our arch rivals um, through financial oh, trouble back in the early 2000s. Gotcha. Now, finan financial trouble for an Australian team is pretty much like the money that Stan Kroenke would find behind his couch. <laughs> so it really, really, <laughs> really wasn't, really wasn't much, but we got merged with our arch rivals. Uh, in comparison, that will be like the Chargers getting merged with the Raiders. Ooh, no, thank you. And then, uh, and then calling us like the electric pirates, something stupid <laughs> the like electric that. Pirates. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. So when that happened in the early 2000s, I just went, yeah, nah, not following sport anymore in Australia. Yeah. I watch it, but you know, my heart really isn't with anyone. Uh, fast forward 2009. I was a, uh, a sprightly 23 year old traveling solo around the world. Um, and I had to go meet up with a mate who was living in San Diego. He chased a bird over there after oh, cool. going to San Diego state. Nice. So I lived, I lived on his couch just off Garnett down in Pacific beach. And it was uh, a bit of a ritual every Sunday that we would head down to, God, if they're still there, Carbo Cantina or yeah. uh, Bub's Dive Bar, if you've been down there. So, I mean, I knew nothing about American football. 
Um, I really just kind of fell in love with the margaritas and the hot wings at 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then as, as, as the season progressed, like I, I just got more and more into it and watching the games at Carbo and walking around with a confetti gun every time LT or Gates would score a touchdown and blasting that off. And then, you know, the longer the kind of the season went on, the more people would teach me every time I went out drinking with them. And then by the end of it, I was like, I'm a Chargers fan. Sweet. And then um, wanted to go get a jersey, tried to get a Quentin Jammer jersey. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, just because. Well, I didn't know I didn't know any of the players, but I just like the name Jammer. For sure. So it sound, sounded good. Um, couldn't find one in the end. Came home, got a Keenan Allen jersey, I think, a couple of years later. And then um, the love affair started. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So, so what do you think so far? Like, you know, cause our team has changed so much in the last year. There's so many dynamic changes to this team, this coaching staff, everything. Like what, what do you think of the direction we're going in? I think it's really good. Um, like I said, it's with having this younger coach, this kind of Kevin Stefanski, this, um, this Kyle Shanahan, this Sean McVay going down that route. That's kind of the way, I feel like all these good teams are trending. And so for us to be able to grab the Wunder kid yeah. in Staley and then, you know, I guess implement that Rams defense that he had last year and stuff, I'm looking forward to it. You know, it was pretty heartbreaking, though, seeing people like Casey get cut, um, seeing Hunter bugger off to um, the Patriots. Yeah. Um, don't know if I can forgive him for that. And, uh, but then seeing getting like happy Ray Sean got paid by the Jags, but. I mean, he's going to the Jags, so good luck there, champ. Seriously. Um, yeah, yeah, but you know, it, it's it's good. Change is good. I think we desperately need a change. I loved Anthony. I loved Anthony Lynn. Um, I think he came in at a really good time. Um, Mike McCoy was an absolute dog's breakfast. Oh yeah. Seriously. So the team. Oh man, I remember watching a Bosa interview a uh, post game, and uh, after we got flogged by someone. And I could just kind of see in his face him going, God, why did I join this fucking organization? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then I'm looking to go, man, like the team is just not cohesive. They're not together. So, you know, kudos for Lynn for bringing everyone together. Yeah. Um, but then I just kind of feel like after four years, his tactics and everything were just dated. So bring in something new, something fresh, change everything around and hopefully make that push. You know, we've got the pieces. Yeah. we got the quarterback. We've got the receivers. You know, just tighten up that O line, and you know, get a couple more pieces on defense. And, you know, maybe we'll give give it a shot. That's an interesting way to look at it. Like he definitely kind of came in and gave like an injection of kind of culture a little bit. Like it was much different than the McCoy culture. So at least it was a stepping stone. We didn't step back from McCoy. Yeah, we stepped forward at least. Hundred percent. You know, bringing in, and I think that was kind of what he was focusing on. Him and um, him and Telesco is bring that culture, bring good character guys in. And they've really left a good foundation now for Staley to work off, especially because you've got pieces now in every level of defense and in the offense. So, you know, we're nearly, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. So it's kind of, it's exciting to see where we go really. hundred percent. Well, speaking of that, like where do you think we're going to go in this draft? Like we clearly need a cornerback, clearly need offensive line and we need some pass rush help. So where, what, what do you like? What do you think we should do well, in the first round? Oh, look, I, I think because we've done now, we've got Lindsay, Corey, um, awesome signing. That's going to do wonders for Herbert, um, reading defenses and him progressing as a quarterback. And you saw how much he already made a jump last year from that Chiefs game to basically the last Chiefs game. Um, that was awesome. You know, he's, he's tightened up the other two guard spots. So you're thinking he's got to go left tackle unless there's a trade. Um, but look, I think <laughs> after last year in the draft, um, and I was so hell bent on tour purely because of the media hype around him. Me too. I think it was you and you and me both had heard about yeah, it. I was buddy. like tour, tour, tour. Everyone's so hyped about tour. And then when Herbert got his name called, I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> um, and I am happy, happy to wear that, happy to, you know, eat my own hat. That's oh, fine. He's a baller. So, Really, like I'm, I'm trying not to listen to the draft analysts and experts out there because they got it, they got it so wrong. Like, I mean, to hear the sound bites of Joel Klatt saying that Herbert's going to be a bust and 
Now, you know, stick that up, yeah. I know. Too bad, man. I love with the Chargers, they did so, like that super cut of all the guys that were yeah, had the bad exactly. the bad takes. It's like, and that's what Go we got kind of, on the podcast. <laughs> it's hard for us because like everyone wants to do like mock drafts. So I'm like, I'm scared to death of doing my mock draft right now because I don't want two to happen to me again. So I just want to let things slowly yeah. happen so I don't get myself e- in trouble. E- exactly. We got we got tickets on everyone now calling her a bit of bust. But with the draft, like I don't know. Like I, I want to go tackle because I want to solidify that blind side. But then again, I, I kind of think it's BPA with with tackle and corner, and then and then just see where the chips fall basically for the rest of the draft. So tackle, corner, edge, definitely not edge first round. Um, although I've seen some mocks have been um, highlighted with Micah Micah Parsons. Yeah, I've seen it? that. The line blacker. Yeah. So. Too. Man, it's got to, you know, we're armchair GMs. I think yeah. we just got to trust the real GMs yeah. in this kind of ways. Although, mocks are, they're fun. They're good to do. Yeah. They're fun. And it'll be interesting because Staley is clearly, he's, his career has been made on giving guys a second breath, you know, giving them a chance to really excel and do good things on a team that they've already been on and they just they step up to the next level and get big contracts. So maybe some of these guys on our roster will become that guy for him. Nwosu. You know, I think everyone's kind of predicting Uchenna to make a big jump. He was an outside linebacker pre-Bradley um, system, wasn't he? Yeah. And, um, you know, he's a, he's a speed guy as well. So, you know, I saw somebody posted on Reddit what his sack percentages were and his pressure percentages and stuff. And, I mean, they were two and a half times out of Ingram. So, yeah. you know, big jump. Let's, yeah. hope he, let's hope he lives up to it. Yeah, somebody's also, somebody else has the keys to the car. Let's see how they run it. And so th- thank you so much for coming on, dude. It was nice meeting you. And I always love to um, meet all good. international fans, bro. It's awesome. So you have any plans on coming to uh, any games anytime soon? Check out the SoFi. I, man, I would give my left nut to get over there. Um, <laughs> it would be, oh, I mean, that stadium is amazing. I mean, truthfully, I don't know why a lot of people were complaining so much about that dignity, healthcare, sports, park, whatever it was last year. Um, a lot of the grounds that we have for our rugby league competition here in Sydney are just kind of um, like the suburban grounds. They oh, can really? only fit like 15, 17,000 people. And when you go to one of those games and it's the packed house and, you know, hearing those guys running up and down the field and you're so close to them, like, that's, that's awesome. So oh, yeah. the Dignity Healthcare Sports Park would have been would have been great to watch a game, but I don't think anything will compare to so far. So if you guys sort out your COVID over there like we have here, maybe I'll maybe <laughs> I might be able to convince the wife to uh to take a trip with me over to over to LA and we can watch a game. We'll work on that for you and uh, you let us know when that's happening and we'll uh, we'll meet up for sure, man. Thank you so much oh, for your mate. time. Hundred percent. Thanks, Hogan. Awesome. Uh, all right, dude. Talk to you later. Okay, love you bye. Okay, love you bye. I love that guy so that, much. That was so <laughs> that was so many. That was great. And I think my, I I was like I was into that whole interview, and then when he said "huggin," and it kind of sounded like "hoggin." I love that it. was the best Hagen. part. Yeah. So good, Kevin dude. Hagen, dude. Hagen. The electric pirates. Could you imagine? Yeah. Uh, that's hilarious. Oh, oh my god. And one other one other little tidbit of advice. Don't go to Pacific Beach and like jump onto something for the rest of your life. <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like PB strikes again. You go to PB and decide to be a Charger fan. You didn't have time to do research and know like our history. You just kind of got embraced. I love in it. it right they had a confetti gun in. blasting people. That's sick. That's so I dope. love it. That's so awesome. <laughs> yeah. PB strikes again. And honestly, go the down name... there looking for fun, and you leave with something for a lifetime. Yeah, it's. I don't know. Thank you so much, man. That was. I had a blast chatting with you, and it was so was awesome. crazy trying to coordinate it because it's like they're like a day ahead of us. So it's like I messed up our first timing to do the meetings, and he's like texting me. He's like, "Are you ready?" I'm like. Oh, whoa, whoa. This is a different day, <laughs> different other, other side of the planet. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, but, uh, but, so, uh, my apologies for that touch of phallus. And uh, yeah, dude, I love it. There you go. All right, everybody, wash your hands for Pete's sakes, for touch of phallus' sake. Let's get this COVID <laughs> under control. Everybody get vaccinated. Wash your hands. Wear a mask. God damn it. I want touch of phallus over here on American soil for Pete's sake. He deserves it. You shouldn't touch someone, phallus, right? <laughs> <laughs> I want him to shoot somebody in the face with a confetti gun. Is that so much to ask? God bless. The dick right. jokes runneth over. <laughs> Literally. All right. <laughs> Literally. All right. Enough of that. Uh, let's move on over to the one, the only, 
McGreg Experience. CC gang, salute to the rest of the Bolt fam. What's going on? She got Craig in Texas, and welcome to another edition of the Craig Experience. So, chugging right along in draft season, last week we did cornerbacks. And speaking of CBs, my guy, JC Horn, went out and had a hell of a pro day. I mean, blew that bad boy all the way up and uh, proved himself well worth that 13th pick. That's right, coach. Anyway, moving right along into the position that we've all been clamoring for all offseason for the most part. A lot of us feel like it's this spot or a bust at 13, and that's offensive tackle. And there are a few different options there. A couple guys who will never make it around 13, or at least don't seem like they have any chance of it. Panay Sewell, maybe not even Rayshon Slater. And then you've got your guys that have no business being there at 13, like a Samuel Cosme, in my opinion. And um, you've got some cats that are hungering around right there in the middle that maybe make some sense. Christian Darasaw. But my guy is USC's Elijah Vera Tucker. And yeah, a lot of people see him as a guard. But the guy played tackle last year and showed himself way more than just capable of doing it and manning down that spot. And being versatile doesn't hurt. Especially not on this team. Well, injuries seem to happen like clockwork every year. So the more movable pieces you have that can operate at a high level, the better off you are. Apparently, if you're a charger, that is. So the guy goes out and has a hell of a pro day himself. Measures in at six foot four, little over 300 pounds, moves really well. I uh, believe he ran a 5-1-3-40, had uh, 32 reps on the bench, and a 32-inch vert. Really good short shuttle and three cone times, so the kid's a player. And what I love most about him on the field second level menace i mean if he gets a hold of a safety or a linebacker you're getting driven into the ground or back 15 20 yards and then planted either way it's gonna be messy so guys talk to me who's your offensive lineman at 13 love to hear what you got to say about it as always and you know what it is bow ganger don't bang okay love you bye this is the Craig Experience. <laughs> ah, I feel experienced already. Well, oh, no. I think those are some great questions, and he kind of called you out a little bit there, Coach. So, yeah, you uh, start pick at th- pick at thirteen. If uh, if Sewell and Slater are potentially off the board, who is the tackle that uh, that is in your favor? Yeah, so I think okay, so Sewell, if Sewell and S- Slater are both off the board. Um, for me, it's Darisaw, but I think if, 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 um, Sewell and Rayshon Slater are both off the board, that's where I think it opens up the opportunity to go best available. Um, I think after that, you can get a Liam Eichenberg from Notre Dame. I think he may even fall to us in the second. And I think he could still play pretty early on. Um, and we also picked up some guys in free agency that have played tackle before that, in a pinch could, I don't, I don't know. I, to me, like it just gets so hard if we don't solidify that tackle spot in the first round, yeah, it yeah, just, yeah. I, like I, my confidence in our roster gets just shaky. Um, I know that there are guys that are great that are day one starters at other positions that would help the chargers in the long term. But this season, like we all know that with Justin Herbert's contract, we need to win right now. Mm-hmm. And to me, the biggest, hole in our whole offense is left tackle yeah tevy's gone so it's not even like a we could patch it with the guy that did okay last year he didn't do great pipkins he did did okay <laughs> no nope i'd rather just play 10 man football than want to watch pipkins get run around pumpkins we'll bring um, back pumpkins and then there's a couple of so like okay so if tackle if the guy's not there and you're trying to get best available i think the guys that will be best available that fall to us are either cornerback or wide receiver. Cornerback. Here's that's easy. Cornerback. If you're that, not going to go offensive line. Well, not according to coach. It just depends on who. Well, I don't always agree with the the OG coach Duggan, 
Okay, this well, here's new generation. Well, you're not his favorite this episode. Here's, I never yeah. will be again. That's fine. Here's, here's what here, everyone knows how I feel about um, pro days and the combine. I'm going I don't Olympics. care. I, I don't care about your times. I don't care your shuttle. I don't care how much you bench press. I don't, I, I honestly don't care. I care about what you do on the football field. And that's probably personal bias because I was awful at all of those things, but I, I'd like to believe that I was okay at football. And I think that it, it sheds light on like, you don't have to be good at those things to be a good football player. Yeah. I think right. there's plenty of guys that are You'd in the NFL that did not have good combines. You're good those things. You're a good track star, but not necessarily and if, football. If, if, if it's a guy that's like, was already up there, was already super high on your board and he has a great pro day. Okay. Cool, like move them up a couple notches. Um, but guys that have, I just don't. If if it's like an unknown guy that has a good pro day, I just don't care. Now I'm not saying J.C. Horn's an unknown guy at all. Um, the the problem with with Horn is he opted out of this whole last season. He hasn't played football in two years. Now Penny Sewell is in the same situation. Um, right. So that that brings up the question: How much do you guys put into this idea that the opt out of some of these guys that haven't played in over two years? they're going to be able to plug and play day one, just go play football now at full speed, full contact, go. Dude, I think it's going to be interesting. Like I said this a, a long time ago, is like this is going to be the most weird year with no combine, none of this stuff. So it's really about mm-hmm. the scouting departments. Like look at what's happening to us. Every other day, there's like, oh, all right, that guy just ran the sickest 40. Let's get him. Like, you know, I it, it's so all over the place. Like I, I, I think there's going to be guys that, are going to be available that are going to fall just because there were no, there was no tape last year. There was no, there right. it's going to be like a thing in the back of their minds. Like, Oh, they didn't play last year, but let's hope. Uh, I don't know. You know, it's that's, that is going to be there. So it's going to be weird, dude. I'd be so curious to see who's going to fall to us. The more I'm looking at like the, how it's shaking up with all these, these teams trading up and moving around. It feels like it's going to be a very heavy kind of skill position for some of these teams that are moving up to try and get a quarterback and do this kind of stuff. So I don't know. I I would still love to see Slater fall to us. I hope that that happens, but if it doesn't, you know, I think you, you really need to consider one of those. If he doesn't, then you're, you're probably going to have one of those top cornerbacks kind of sitting around that area. And you need to Mm -hmm. think, think about it at least before you pull the trigger on like a Tucker or a Derisaw or one of those guys. Um, and that's, mm-hmm. that's just what I think about it. Yeah. I, as far as who we pick, as far as the choices that, uh, Greg gave us, I'm totally fine with Barrett Tucker. I'm fine with just about any offensive tackle. Um, one of the things that came out recently that I thought was kind of interesting was, uh, there was a tweet saying that, uh, Joe Burrow was wanting to get a wide receiver, uh, for the Cincinnati pick. And right now everybody's predicting Penny Sewell to go to Cincinnati because they are higher up on the board. And we also what happened to Joe Burrow last year, because why of would he line. not want a new tackle? I, he's, he's high. If he's it's just, think, it, it, it's, he wants Jamar chase. He's a LSU. Right. Guy. Yeah. It's one of his teammates. Like, get so, it. Just a boy. But yeah. Most right. teams don't so, listen to the players. Of course. So it's just interesting that if, he does have any sway over what Cincinnati picks and it does happen to end up being a wide receiver. Then that opportunity for the chargers to get a, you know, either Sewell or Slater becomes much better. Uh, We'll see what happens, but uh, I'm still seeing uh, mock drafts. I think chargers just really had a tweet on mock drafts, you know, across uh, all sports uh, websites as far as who's going to who is predicting to go to the chargers and there's a lot of slater still on there so there's yeah. still people that are predicting that slater is going to fall to the chargers i did see some wide receivers i did see a kyle pitts uh, and i did see some cornerbacks on there so we'll see what ends up happening that it's still it this is probably the most questionable as far as what the chargers will do in the draft uh in a long time as far it's not as, what as we clean would end up cut picking. as it was like last year no. like last year was clean no. cut this year is like Whoa, what's happening? as much as none of us wanted to admit it it was pretty clean cut so yeah. uh we'll we, we will see what happens but uh great question craig and thank you for uh, shedding some light on vera tucker i'm with you dude i think uh, if he falls to us and uh slater is off the board then let's make it happen all right, now we look on over to Ask Bolt Fam. Welcome yeah, back, folks. Got some questions lined up, some great ones. Let's start it off with Pyro KM47, aka Boltman47, who asked the question 
Did you guys see all the cool shit at the SoFi store people <laughs> were buying? I too live too far away and are saving my trips for the actual games. What was your first jersey? Mine was powder blue. Nice. I think Sean mine was Merriman, a navy. What, specifically. Mine, was, ooh, mine was a navy sale, I believe. Way back. Yeah, I think when. mine was that same. Say our Navy once I grew into it and you were done wearing it. <laughs> yes, it was a hand-me-down. Hand You're welcome. Yeah, hand-me-down nice. junior Say Our jersey. Thank and those, you. Love those, it. Those, those uh, screen-pressed pre ones back in the day, they would just kind of oh, deteriorate. Yeah. Yeah. Crack. Yeah. The numbers would crack yeah. a little bit. And, you, yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. I, I, I want to take this opportunity to shout out somebody because something amazing happened to me two days ago, and it's Ooh. Karen. And Karen, she knows that I'm Duh. not in the middle of the country. Uh, she knows I'm in the middle of the country, right. and she went and got was able to secure me a Nike Elite field jersey, game jersey. And I just want to thank her so much. God damn much. Justin Herbert. Of Justin all Herbert, powder blue, <laughs> right. ready to go. Um, I'm going to have to hit the gym <laughs> a little bit to get fit enough to squeeze into that puppy, but I am ready <laughs> and the challenge is accepted. So thank you so much, Karen. And there's so many people like going out and helping. Um, you know, I've seen it all over Twitter. Like, hey guys, send me your orders. Like yeah. people that couldn't go into the store. Like I love to see that. Yeah. I, I had no idea that they would have such uh, exclusive items at the yeah. store that weren't available to get elsewhere. Like I was just expecting it to be like, oh, okay, it's same stuff online, but they have it at the store. But I'm looking right. at it going like, oh my God, like there's yeah, some, there's I a would lot. buy so much of this oh, stuff. Dude, yeah, where's problem. my stimulus I'm glad money? I, I got to Because I, I would have no money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the government's paying for a lot of new Charger stuff. That's oh, very stimulate true. Stimulate the Charger store. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, wow. Spanos, here, you're stimulated. <laughs> yeah, feel, you're stimulated. You're welcome. Uh, my first jersey was a Philip Rivers Navy, and it was also one of those old screen print ones that, like, it was the mesh, so there was holes all in the numbers and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But a great jersey to have, so love it. Still got it. Uh, thank you, Pyro KM 47 Now we move on over to Mark, who asked the question. With all the trades that are happening, it seems like a better chance that O-line will drop down the board. If the option is between Sertain and Slater, who do you take? Oh, Slater. Slater. Slater is easy. Slater. That's an easy decision. <laughs> yeah. I, I would love, if yeah. that happens, like everyone, you know, everyone was thinking we could land him about, you know, a month ago. And now it's like, we'll be really lucky if he even comes near. Because he us. had a good pro day. Everyone's, yeah. everyone loves the pro day and he had a good pro mm -hmm. day and he put up good numbers and now he's climbing up boards, which sucks. Yeah, it's problematic. Well, it, it's, it, he's climbing up boards for fans. Like we don't know what, you know, the general managers are thinking what the scouts are thinking. Um, but as far as fans go, or as far as other sports news sites go, yeah, he's climbing up boards, but that doesn't, I mean, it's just, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's happening. Now that we're far enough away from the regular season, are we still holding the same belief that those last four wins were a good idea? Yeah. Yes. Cause we were at one of them okay, and that good. was one of the okay. best games I had. I had so much fun at that damn game. Okay, like, okay. whatever. I just like, to make sure well, we're on the same board. Whoever we get is who we're going to have. Like, I, yeah, I take nothing back. No, and I get we all get the mentality. Like, if we would have lost those games, we would have been higher up in the draft, and we would have gotten. Yeah. It's just like now, sure right now, where we're at, we it's want. like shit. We, Penny Sewell would have been a slam dunk at four where we were yeah, sitting. But is Herbert right. um, rookie of the year? Probably. Bada bing, bada boom. If you're losing. What what does that do to his stats? Yeah. I would rather well, win, have a rookie of the year, and have the thirteenth pick. That's just me. Okay, yeah. all right, all right, moving, on. moving. On. Yeah. I'm with you. Respect, yeah. Matt. Good, no, it's a good no, question. You shush. You shush. <laughs> no, you shush. shush. All right, every a hey. shush. 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 Let's shush. move on now to Zach Whitaker, aka Real Tone Diggs, who asked the question. Now that we have Kyle Fackrell as linebacker edge depth. Do you guys give a fact if we move that position <laughs> farther down the draft board? Appreciate you, fellas. Rock out with your cocks out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have fact for sure, man. I'm I I I think you're still gonna address it, but I I think we're not we weren't gonna really address it in the first round. Like I, I just don't see that no. really. 
And but, now I feel more at peace with yeah, giving a fact in like the third round. Sure. 100%. Yeah. yeah I, yeah, I, I think if we move back and get more picks, I think that feels that feels good because we know that there are still plenty of other guys. Yeah, Fackrell, Phil makes me feel more confident there than I do at left tackle, for sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. Big time. And we don't even know him, so that says a lot. Yeah. I don't yeah. even know that yeah. guy. <laughs> good name. All right. Thank you, Zach. Now moving down to Quest 360 Designs. I feel like this is a company asking a question, but let's see what it is. I don't hear much about KJ Hill nor Joe Reed. Do you foresee these two being utilized more under Lombardi? Theatricality's in deception, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> in all reality, I kind of forgot about them. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. They were just, they were not, they did, they played no role in our team last year. And I know they were later round draft picks, but like they they did nothing. Joe Reed didn't do anything on special teams. He well, was brought in to be a return guy. I was going to say Joe Reed had a couple sweet returns last year, just a couple like quick flashes. But KJ Hill, yeah, was borderline non existent last year. I mean, guys sure. that were undrafted came in and had huge impacts over those two <laughs> right. guys. No, right. that's true. Well, I think it's, it's so he, I, don't, I don't the know. sophomore year is usually helpful for those skill positions, getting into the NFL and getting acclimated. So I think if anything, this you know, there's they can only get better. They can only yeah, see and the it was field a COVID more. rookie season. Yeah, it was a COVID rookie season. They didn't have right. training camp. They didn't have preseason games. So they were kind of just trying to catch up all season in in a sense. Yeah. So may, maybe and 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 that that much more that drafting wide receiver first round it's like golly how many do we need? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> exactly. So I got a question for you now that you mentioned that uh if Tyrod did not get hurt as early in the season as he did, do you think we would have seen more from KJ Hill and Joe Reed? Do you think it's because no, no. Herbert we was practicing way with D. Billy and and Guyton though? No. Mm -hmm. With with Justin going into the game, now passing opportunities exploded and Way more opportunities changed. And like if anything, that helped KJ and Joe Reed potentially get more opportunities and they didn't take advantage of it. And they weren't even making mm -hmm. the game day roster most of the time. So they were they were literally yeah. just kind of floating like Mm. So I, I think that, you know, we'll see that it's going to be a big off season for them. And we still have them under contract for a couple of years because they were draft picks. So you you'd want right. to try and utilize them. They both had good skill sets. That's why we brought them in. I think this new coaching sure. staff is going to find a way to get them in the mix. And, that, and that's, again, why I'm not thrilled about another wide receiver. Unless you can find like a Tyreek yeah. Hill burner. I don't, I don't see a real need in finding, you know, like a tactician kind of wide receiver. Uh, that's where my opinion is, at least. Yeah, I think we're we're so bolstered up at that position. It feels that if that's the first round choice that we make, that it would just, man, it just feels like a waste of a pick. Even if it is the best available, there's got to be some other position of need that we have that there is a, a good first round starter that should fill that position. But time will tell. Time will tell. All right. Thank you, Quest 360 Designs. Now we move on to Gnarly Ray Jepsen who asked the question. Hypothetically, since last year we were in the running to get Tom Brady, but he went to the Bucks, would you be happy if instead we got him and all the players that the Bucks signed because they were ring-chasing and won the Super Bowl and knocked out the Chiefs out of the AFC Championship game and had him for a couple of years? If that meant we didn't draft Herbert, for our future. I go back and forth because this is a hypothetical guaranteed Super Bowl win scenario versus our actual situation where we have to hope that the Chargers front office doesn't act like a Chargers front office and ruin Herbert's future. And yes, I do realize that this scenario probably also means that Lynn would still be head coach. Here's the thing. I think the whole this whole scenario doesn't work because of the coaching staff that we had last year. Those yeah. mistakes were still going to get let's, made. Let's just say you win a Super Bowl, but you don't get Justin Herbert for the quarterback. I would rather future. have. Would you do? I, it? That's hard to say, but honestly, like I don't think I don't think it's a guarantee <laughs> that that team wins a Super Bowl. Where Kevin? Kevin, 
We're talking hypotheticals, Mr. Hypothetical. He's, gi- he's giving Don't you two go choices. No, this, this hypothetical is assuming no, that no, 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 you no, shut no, your no, mouth no, when I'm talking no, to you. No, no, no. Hypothetical is a hypothetical. Shut don't it. go down this road, Kevin. What, you would get to do you rather time when win I don't. a Super Bowl? <laughs> would no. you rather win a Super Bowl or Super have Justin Bowl Herbert? Or have Justin Herbert for the future? Well, <laughs> okay. uh, answer the question. It's a it's shitty a hypothetical. hypothetical. I don't want to. <laughs> I like Herbert. Answer it. I take the Super Bowl 100%. No, thoughts, but I don't no like. Questions. No, 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 no. Because I don't. Here's the hypothetical. I, it's easy for me to say Herbert because I don't think that team wins a Super Bowl with Lynn and that coaching staff. No, that's not. But the if you're guaranteed to win, you're guaranteed hey, to that, win Super Bowl. Hey, that hypothetical was modified into my hypothetical. That makes sense no, to me because they wouldn't have won the Super Bowl anyway. You can't <laughs> hypothetically triple speaking, triple stamp a double stamp. Floyd. You can't triple stamp a double stamp. Kevin's too loyal to say he doesn't want Justin Herbert. Dude, I got a expensive Herbert jersey coming in the mail. I'm not going to say <laughs> that right. I would rather have a Super Bowl. <laughs> would you rather win a Super Bowl or spend three hundred and fifty dollars? <laughs> three hundred and fifty dollars. No, you want uh, you would no, take the I'm Super with you, Bowl. Dude. I'll answer for you. Yeah, I'm with you, dude. I I think the whole reason the Bucks worked was because I think they let Tom Brady basically coach on the field and make those decisions out on the field i, I think do remember they him gave him a lot in a more game freedom that they lost thought that he was on a third down play when it was actually fourth down and they lost right. that game. it was one of the best I've, plays of the let, year. I so love that. it's let, hard to say that he, he came in and stop. would fix everything but he still won a super you're, bowl dude he still won you were it. just criticizing up, about Both hypotheticals and now you're being ridiculous let's just say hypothetically bruce arians comes over and becomes a charge we traded Anthony Lynn for Bruce Arians. Mm, coach he was trade. our coach last year. Awesome. And we win a Super Bowl. Would you take that? You okay, so you have Bruce Arians, you have the coach, and we win the Super Bowl, or you have Justin Herbert. Now you have to answer it. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> have to I'm gonna no say out. Herbert. I'm gonna say Herbert. Oh, you shamelessly positive. Yes, I am. Uh, I'm royal. not gonna go think... rolling around in the mud with you boys. It's, I mean, it's tough. If you, if you could have a I guaranteed Super Bowl, Super Bowl we've never win. had one. Good God. I know we've never had one, man. Like that and would I've never be... had this feeling about a 22, 21 year old man before guys. But I guess, I guess and it also I does go like, do you think, anymore. <laughs> do you think that we win more than one Super Bowl with Herbert? At uh, that's where, that's why I feel confident with this. Cause I think we, we're going to win some Super Bowls with Herbert. That's why uh, it's I, easier I, for I me to that, say. I want that one in the bank to be honest. I feel I you, dude. That one. I'm with you. I, I think the future of this team is exciting with Herbert as the quarterback with Staley as the coach. Uh, How many times I have think we heard that as chargers? I know. Well, Will oh, you get excited. back into the shamelessly year. positive podcast, Kyle? I'm shamelessly so positive. So goddamn hypothetical. hypothetically negative. <laughs> it's hypothetical. Hypothetically yeah, negative. I mean, You've been doing that about to me. It. It'd be positive we if we shut down an episode Bowl, because of a hypothetical that you <laughs> threw out there. What are you? You were driving the car. You were slamming the brakes on me hard, bro. What are you talking about? <laughs> hypothetical. <laughs> hypothetically shut up. It's Look all it up. good. Shut your face. It's all good. All right. Thank you, Gnarly Ray Jepsen, for spinning the <laughs> hey, that was stirring the question. pot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to go kick Kyle's ass now after that one. That was fun. Yeah. Fly out right. to Missouri and Good luck. Kevin will be brother. catching the first flight. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now let's move on over to Daniel LaWallen, who asked the question. Dude. <laughs> Which were the best Chargers teams from each decade, in your opinions? I'll go first. 1963 World Champions AFL Days, 1981 Epic in Miami and Freezer Bowl, 1979 First of Three Division Titles in a Row, 1994 Super Bowl Appearance, 2006 LT Record TDs 14 2, or 2018 that Baltimore win. K, okay, love you. Bye. So I'm this. It's like I think our best Chargers team, and this is because the one I saw, I was not alive in 1963. I can look up the stats, but I didn't get to like feel it and be a part of it. Um, the 2006 Chargers, when we were 14 and 2, yeah, living in San Diego, I was 16 at the time, and like going into grocery stores and seeing everyone in their gear and going, driving around town with flags in the air. Like I felt, I felt like the camaraderie and that's why we love sports. And I felt like how, and I, I watched how dominant we were and how 
like just how good that team was built in all three dimensions. Mm -hmm. I think that that was the best team. And that's probably because of personal bias. And that's what I experienced. But I don't know if until we win a Super Bowl, I don't know how I'll top that 2006 season in my like memory bank. I think it's interesting because I think that was the team that was like one of the worst special teams and then they had like one and two were the best offense, you know, offense and defense were the best. I, yeah. I think there's mm. really something to be said for that 81 Fouts team with Kellen Winslow and all those guys. Like if they would not have run into Cincinnati and like frozen to death with like negative whatever wind chill and not been able to throw the ball, like I think that team wins the Super Bowl. I really do. Mm -hmm. Like you look at the highlights. Two thousand six, we win the Super Bowl if it weren't for some stupid, stupid defensive back trying to be a hero. On, yeah, I, I agree. I we've had we've had some dabbling. I'd say uh, that you could argue both of those, in my opinion. Between I'm just the, wanting to fight you now. Like so, yeah, anything you, 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 you say, got, <laughs> it wasn't even yeah. really saying anything to you. <laughs> you you should have just picked the same team as me. <laughs> no, I'm just, just picked the two thousand six. No, two thousand six was amazing, but I I think you know. I, I could, you could either pick, in my opinion, 2006 or 81. Yeah. They're like neck and neck. Like those are, these are, these are all of our best teams. So it's, it's, it's a fun scenario. That's Daniel, five, what, what is that? Six and 50 years. So 60 years. So that's not great. Wish we had more. <laughs> he said, this is, this is one team from each decade. This yeah, is the best team. Right. These are like, decade, these are staples decade. though. Like these, these were the, team, yeah, they are you, know, staples. you know what I yeah. mean? Like there weren't a lot of other like middle ground ones. It was either this or like, we were kind of shit. <laughs> we have, I we mean, have one team a decade. Yeah. One decade. One yeah, good one year decade. every 10 years. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and honestly, the 2018 choice was just, we had a good win in the playoff. Yeah. And that was, yeah. Phil did his <laughs> first so. down dance. Games. Yeah. yeah. Phil did his thing. So I, I think for me, it's hard to ignore that the Chargers go to a Super Bowl. I think that uh, yeah. that in itself is 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 yeah. amazing. Um, but I'm with you. I think on the 2006, that was the one that like you couldn't ignore. Lt setting the record. You can't ignore the right. team. We had going the best record two. in the NFL. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like that. You can't ignore that. No matter where you are, if you're a fan of football, if you're aware of it, and even if you're not, if you're in San Diego, like you said, the flat the flags are flying. Uh, the, it's, you know, pictures up in the supermarket, it's everywhere. So I think 2006 was definitely probably, uh, the best charger team of the decade, or at least my favorite. So, uh, great question, Daniel. Appreciate it. Uh, moving on down now to Bobby Caldron, who asked the question. Let me ask you something. Do you think there would be any reason to think Herbert might have a sophomore slump? Sorry, I hate to even ask. But this is something I think about too often. Uh, that was my best Tony Soprano, as per the request of the Chargers nerd. I love it. Tacked I on love to it. Bobby Caldrone. People are jumping on Twitter if they don't request something. Somebody swoops in and is like, do it, do it like this. Yeah. I love it so much. Yeah. Um, well, that was my best Tony Soprano. So congratulations. <laughs> so Bobby, quick and easy, my opinion. Could he? Yes. Willie? No. Done. Yeah, I think. I think there's so, like a lot of the things that go into a sophomore slump. We've talked about this on previous episodes before. Um, he's going to be in a whole new system and they're building this new system around all the things that he does great. So if you go mm -hmm. back and look at last year's tape, you're not going to be able to game plan around what he did and say, hey, this is how we stop Justin Herbert. Um, what do you bring pressure? He was the best quarterback against pressure last year. So the only thing you say is you sit back and give him exotic defenses um, well, the best guy at that is our head coach, uh, Brandon Staley. So I just think there's a lot of things go. We have, we had the worst offensive line in the league and we are already drastically better with only four guys. So I think that everything is moving towards him, not having a so sophomore slump Yeah, that his numbers match. I can't guarantee that, but I don't think he's going to have one of those quote unquote slumps where he drops off significantly. Um, you I think he's going to have regression. Well, and even like guy. Rich Eisen sent out a tweet. They were talking about like his potential next year and they were like over under 30, 35 touchdown, 32 touchdowns. And Eisen was like, not only over, but considerably over. Wow. Mm. That's what he thought at least. So there's a lot of excitement around and I, you know, that can play against him, but he's not on social media. He posts one picture every month, and I don't think he's reading any of this shit. Like, he's not, like, getting right. in his I don't head. think he's responding he's to comments or anything He's not on TikTok. Like he's not that. dancing. You know, he, that's just not his thing. He's very Phil in that way where you, he wasn't on social media. You're not, you know, he's all about the game. So 
You know, mm-hmm. I think you can get in some of these quarterbacks get it in their head when especially like rookie of the years, like you're partying up more, you're celebrating, you get more fame, you're getting more all this. And he's not I'm not really seeing much of that. He's up in Oregon with his parents and living at his parents' house. Right. So it's, right. it's just a different energy. I think it's all kind of the you know, the the recipe, the secret to the success will be in that, him staying humble and him, you know, keeping his head on straight. So if he can do that, I don't think there's any sophomore slump. Couldn't agree more. I think they're they're building this team around him. They're living by Herbert. They will die by Herbert. And it, for all intents and purposes, it should be Herbert all the way. So thank you for asking the question, Bobby. I know it's something that's lingering around in all of our heads, but I, I just don't see it happening. Fight None it. of us fight here the, Chargers fight, had to. Resist, yeah, fight resist it. Don't it. think about it. It's Bobby, positive. fight positive. this Shamelessly feeling positive. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's move on now to Chimney Crickets who asks a question and makes a request for an impersonation. I've never done this before. Wish me luck. If Mala McCree never fumbles that ball, do we win the Super Bowl that year? Does Marty stay on as head coach? Do we ever leave San Diego? That was my best Barack Obama. That's Thank good. You. Thank you. Yeah. Solid. Well done. Yeah. Well done. Well done. And well my answers are yes, yes, and no. I think we do win the Super Bowl. I think Marty stays on as Ooh. head coach because you can't fire a coach that wins the Super Bowl. Yep. And I <laughs> think we don't, we'd never leave San Diego. If we won a Super Bowl, they build a stadium. Yep. The, hands down. Like that would have, that Marlon McCree fumbled. Wow. Yeah. Screw you, Marlon. Wow. You ruined everything. <laughs> So, so, so if you had a, a time machine, Kyle, if you had a DeLorean, <laughs> you would go back in time and do something to get Marlon out of that game. Yeah. This is like a sick Back the to the Future 2 something. scenario that would be really fun to watch as a movie. Oh like these God. guys yeah. that get a hold of a time machine and the, all they want is to get their team to win a Super Bowl and change everything. That would be so yeah. awesome to watch that. That would be pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah something little it. because it was just a one mistake. He's a good football player. Just like. Right. So how do you get him out of so the game? So he can't play that game. If you're if you're traveling back in time, you're 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 a fu- future man. You're a, a Marty yeah. McFly, if you will. Uh-huh. What do you do to get him out of that one play? But don't affect the rest. Don't interrupt the t- a space time continuum. You know. I don't know. This is a good question for the comments down below on YouTube. What do you do there to you stop go. Marlon McCree <laughs> from playing in the 2006 <laughs> game where he blew it and ruined everything for San Diego? There's my what some Visine in his Gatorade bottle. Maybe? That's. I was just about to say that Visine, <laughs> Dumb and Dumber Two. He has to run to the bathroom and he's not out on the field to fumble that. Done. <laughs> Gotta get back there you go. in time. Gotta go back in time. All right. Thank you, Chimney Crickets, for asking such an in-depth question. Uh, now let's move on down to the Reddit side. And we started off with JDM2118, who asked the question, What's up, motherfuckers? <laughs> this is not a question. Just wanted to tell you three that your podcast is the shit. Bro, my favorite. Charge a podcast out there. Thanks for the weekly show. Brothers, <laughs> I'm from Carson City, Nevada. It's nothing but Raider fans out here. F*** the Raiders, cuz. <laughs> Bolt gang or don't bang. Okay? I love you. Bye. <laughs> Dude, thank you. I saw this and I was like, you made my day. Um, yeah, so good. Ma f- I've never... I've seen that spelled like that. <laughs> Love it, dude. Hang out, hang in there, dude. Like, just be it. Just be strong. Just battle yeah, through those raiders. Strong. Just do your if thing. If Kevin, man. if Hug and Duggan can survive living in Kansas City with the Super Bowl champs, I know that you can make it through living in Carson City dealing with it's the, pro- the it might be a little harder raiders, though. man. Yeah, it's <laughs> might be a little harder because they're kind of worse, but. Yeah, it, we can do it, man. You and I together, w- we can do this. So hang in there, my man. Hang in there, JDM2118. All right, now we move on to the Lavish Syndrome, who asked the question. How do you think the recent pick trading will affect who's available at 13? That's a good question. We, talk, we talked yeah. about this a little bit. We, I, no one moved above us. 
It was all a bunch of like moving around, around in to front different, of us. Yeah, shuffled Shuffledge. in front of us. So yeah. it's like the same teams that are in front of us that have the same needs are still in front of us with the same needs. So I don't, I don't know. Like it's clear that San Francisco wants that quarterback, um, and it's mm-hmm. clear that Miami is dead set on Tua. Um, mm-hmm. but it, it's still it the same players available are the players available. I guess you were thinking that maybe Miami was gonna take a shot and trade to a, but now he's not. But now you know that San Francisco is gonna take a quarterback. So it's almost like more of a yeah, quarterbacks are gonna go quick, which there might at the leave the right. board. I think we're gonna get to that 12, and there's gonna be a couple people we want, and then hopefully the Philadelphia Eagles don't just screw us. That's that's really all I'm <laughs> worried about <laughs> yeah hopefully nobody in front of us <laughs> screws us over hopefully they all pick just other people i don't care who pick wide receivers <laughs> take, just get all the wide receivers yeah wide receivers flying off the board for whatever take reason them all. i don't know why but it all the yeah. quarterbacks take as and many all the wide centers receivers. as you want yeah yeah we're set on center so you're good or yeah as many centers yeah, wide receivers or quarterbacks just take them all yeah yeah all right thank you lavish syndrome now we move on to okie doggy who asked the question <laughs> With only a month and counting till the NFL draft is upon us, apart from the offensive line, are there any positions that you want the team to address for depth in the later rounds once we have addressed the positions that we had immediate needs for? (laughs) Defensive back so we can have better depth than last year? Linebacker to replace the losses we had with Denzel and Vigil? Defensive line edge because you can never have enough pass rushers? What do you guys think? Game over, man. Game over. What the fuck are we gonna do now, man? What are we gonna do now? Why did you put her in charge? <laughs> oh, oh, Okie doggy oh. strikes again. My oh, goodness. All right. God. Um, Thank okay, you to answer for that. the question, Okie doggy. Yeah. Yeah, great um, question. Yeah. <laughs> I think those those positions that play significant special teams, I think, is where you um go in to add depth. So linebacker, safeties, um, even potentially some of those aggressive bigger corners. Um, those are the guys that I would foresee us trying to add depth at. We obviously need an overhaul on special teams. Uh, and we did lose right. depth at all those those positions that you mentioned. So Definitely. Um, I do foresee some linebacker um, depth being added, whether it be outside, inside, um, or that strong safety type of position in uh, the later rounds. And we'll take, I'll take a few more O-line guys too. I mean, I'm not opposed to... <laughs> <laughs> to getting yeah. some more depth in that position. We have as nine well. picks. This it's it's a weird year, man. We're we're gonna have the ability to kind of maybe take a flyer on some guys late. And you know, like maybe they'll work out, maybe they won't, you know, we'll see. But uh, there's so much potential. I think Kyle, you hit hit it on the money with special teams guys, like fast linebackers, you know, safeties, DBs that are, you know, not scared to put their, you know, shoulder into somebody. I think that's who you're kind of look at in the late rounds. Big time. Thank you, Okie Doggy. Now we move on to Bolt Fan 43, who asked the question, will you guys be doing any sort of live reactions for the draft this year? <laughs> you couldn't get it what do you that think? One, <laughs> what do you what do you what do you think? Yeah, it's gonna be uh, interesting. I we, think we're yep, hoping. Yeah. We're planning it. Yeah. We're you know, there has been the throwdown of if we can get to a thousand. Subscribers on YouTube, this will become a full blown video podcast. So we are testing. We are doing yes. all the stuff. We are going to be ready to go as soon as we can get that big thousand. So mm-hmm. yes, if we can get get that going, the the goal is to do a live reaction. It will be a a wild one because Kyle and I are going to be at a bachelor party <laughs> for our oh dear <laughs> our little sister is getting married. We're yeah. going out to support our dude Brad. So dude, it's gonna be it's like it'll be on it'll be you know, Popeye level. Kevin will spinach. probably be it, slapping me around. Oh, again, dude, like there, there will year. be some head, you know, some yeah. headlocks, headbutts. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Some black eyes just in time for the wedding. That'd be perfect. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, perfect. That, that's the goal. We're, we're looking, you know, we got some stuff coming up. We're going to do some um, mock drafts. We're going to draft, do yeah. the draft yes. kind of big time where that's the goal. So um, get us up to a thousand guys. Come on. Come on, do it. Do We're it. really close, folks. Just need to get those subscribes. So those of you that have already subscribed, thank you so much. It really Appreciate means it. a lot to us, and we are just getting so dang close to a 1,000. It would just be a real good milestone to hit. So uh, thank you, Bolt Fan 43 We move on now to Cheez-Its, who asked the question. 
Uh, what charges in Spire Fool do you want to eat at the new stadium? I am thinking of uh, Victory Brisket, Nachos, uh, Air Bear, Cotton Candy. Uh, then wash it all down with some tranquil ass tea. That was like, that almost went into New Orleans territory, but. Uh, that was good, Snooty. Hey, French that's food. French. Dude, the yeah, request for getting. That was the French out quarter. <laughs> The, uh, yeah. the request we're getting for these voices is out of control. Snooty French food critic voice, please. Hell stretching. yes. I Here's, love that. Hey, I'll, t- I'll tell you the food that I want at, at SoFi is the Rashawn Sliders. Ooh. Ooh. I'm looking for a Bosa I'm burger, all for personally. It. Oh, yeah, the Bosa, Bosa burger. That was one of our burger, previous yeah. um, endorsers. I like our, that. Our, Previous uh, sponsor. Wow, that was a long time ago. Podcast. Yeah, <laughs> Herbert. Uh, some kind of Herbert inspired kind of um, maybe a milkshake or something. Something mm, real nice. A milkshake brings all the boys to the uh, brings all the boys. Ooh, to the, how about uh, to the end zone? <laughs> how about some uh, <laughs> some roast duck? I would like to see that. <laughs> 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 snap uh, maybe yeah. some little uh duck uh little fried duck you know nuggets or something like that <laughs> or some for craig in texas some jc horn dogs Ooh, look <laughs> at oh, you. Oh, oh, oh snap the creativity right, so, is flowing out of kyle tonight that was good uh, i don't know it's good race on sliders or horn dogs the jc horn dogs <laughs> i like the horn dogs <laughs> Sounds sexy. You would. You horn you dog. <laughs> you are a horn dog. All right. Thank you, Cheese. It's a great question. All Good right. one, dude. We move on down to C. Densley 11, who asked the question. We have nine picks this draft, including three on day two. Gracias, Senor Felipe Rios, for the comp third rounder. Do you think those day two picks are best spent, A, individually to fill out roster holes, B, trade some to move up from 13 if needed for an OT, C, stick at 13, trade some day two picks to get back into the first round like TT did last year, or D, used in a trade package for an Orlando Brown or Ali Benoueva type, I think this one is less likely with the recent 49ers Dolphins Eagles move, but a small possibility. I like the Woo. so I don't think you're going to be you're going to have to give up a lot to move up from 13. So I don't think it's I don't think it's going to be really looking at it would be worth it. It would make C makes the most sense to me like if you want to give up some second second or a third or something like that to move up into the second round, that makes more sense to me. And target right. one of those guys because mm-hmm. there's there's a lot of good guys that are still going to be available. So that makes the most sense in this scenario for me. Yeah, I agree. I think I think the C makes the most sense. You pick your best available at 13 because that's what you do in the first round, and then you find a way to move up to still get one of those tackles that you really like at right. the end of the first, early second. Um, mm-hmm. that can still be a day one starter. To me, yeah. that that's kind of a slam dunk if you're able to to turn that compensatory pick into a just a little bit higher second rounder. To get that day one starter and tackle, that that would be that would be awesome. Because we remember all those trade, you know, like the the Philip Rivers trade where we got like Merriman and a whole bunch of guys. Like, wouldn't that be cool if the compensatory pick that we get for Rivers turned into like some Pro Bowl player? Like we somehow yes. found a way and that was the guy. How memorable would that, that would be? be? Just cool. like Phil, you know, sailing off into the distance, throwing us some new, you know, some new dude. I'd love that. That would be pretty special. Yeah, I'm all for C. Uh, if not a just to utilize what we have all the nine picks that we have so we'll see what tom telesco has up his sleeve uh, but great question uh, thank you c densley and we move on now finally at the end of the road ynwa dad who asked the question you never walk alone hey hey you'll never walk alone hey hey <laughs> he is, <he's> so stupid. <laughs> That's I'm not so the song, bad. you jackals. Look it up. It's a real beaut. <laughs> I have a question about Jerry Tillery. This week or the week before, Coach was talking about how he doesn't think Tillery will be a good fit for the 3-4 because he won't be suited to that outside rusher role. 
but all three full defensive ends typically beefier run stopper type ends, which is exactly what Tillery can be, in my opinion. With faster, more athletic outside linebackers like Uchenna outside them, or am I misunderstanding that? Yeah, first of all, I I I don't know what to do with these two jackals. They don't. You they, never they walk alone. No, I don't want to learn it. it. You never. You walk alone. need to learn it. Never walk alone. You guys both hey. need to just type it into your Spotify and listen to it one time. Because when you sing that dumb but song, my it gets stuck in my head. I can't remember the Our one. song is so good that it gets stuck in your Whatever head. Whatever it is will no, let me so down to what I built it up in my head. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's infuriating. It's all good. Um, yeah. Focus on the, the question. Other question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, Jerry Tillery at the end, like that five technique, four eye technique, whatever it might be. He could. I think he could. In all honesty, I just have no faith in Jerry Tillery in general. I don't know where he fits. Right. I really don't because we drafted him as a three technique and he sucked. And then we played him at the three technique and he sucked. And then we kind of bounced him out into that five tech outside end in our four, three. And he, he was just kind of sucked. I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know where he's going to fit. Maybe, maybe this is it, but in my mind, like him as a player, I'm just like, dude, you're going to have to prove something huge and adapt. And maybe that three, four, that, that five, four technique, five technique four I, whatever they want to play him at. Um, maybe it'll do it. I just, I just, I haven't bought into him being a great football player yet. Right. Yeah. The flashes from him have been minimal at best. And this was a first rounder who has just not lived up to expectations. Yeah. And he was drafted as a three first, tech first I round know. pick. I know. Yeah. So if anybody can maybe utilize his abilities and maybe get the best out of him, I would imagine it would be Staley. Uh, but you're right. I mean, if, it, I hope if I'm it's wrong. just not in his I wheelhouse, really hope I'm yeah, wrong. we'll we'll have to wait and see. But uh, thank you for clarifying that for YNW and a dad. I do walk alone on this podcast when it comes to good he songs. Always and always walks alone. And he always walks alone. He always walks alone. He always walks alone. Always alone. Hey, hey! All right. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta always like throw the hey. A Chevy's happy birthday. Hey, hey. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right that is it for ask both fan which means that is it for this episode of the charger chat podcast thank you all for sticking around with us uh, another great episode in the bag uh, we'll see you next week same bolt time same bolt channel don't forget to bolt up because we're ready for any squad any place okay love you bye okay love you bye okay love you bye <laughs> And now, a word from our sponsors. Hey everybody, Wooldog here, letting you all know how excited we are to go to SoFi Stadium next year. And uh, we had a question in BullFam about some uh, Charger-specific food items that might be there at SoFi Stadium next year. And it inspired me to write a little number for you. So, here you go. Be our guest. Be our guest. Put our online to the test. Say your prayers and make a wish jelly and we'll pass the rest. El Bell Stew, Bosaburg Girls, why we only have two servers. Try the brisket, it's delicious. Don't believe me? Ask the dishes. They can sing up to the sky. After all, this is so fine. And the hot dog here is never second best. Go on and take a seat. It's almost time to eat and be our Guess we are guests, be our guest. Fakro, macro, labushi, sushi, pick and pie, all from me. We'll prepare and serve with flair a culinary cavalry. It's third down and you're scaled, but our QB's all prepared. No one's booing or complaining with our belt line surely straining. We tell jokes, I do tricks with my funny voice and shtick. And it's all in perfect taste, I do my best. We've got a lot to do, is it first down or two for you, our guests? Yes. They're our guests. They're our guests. They're our guests. Be our guests. Be our guests. Our both fam is just the best. It's been a year since we've had anybody here, and we're obsessed. Rose and soup, say a shake with the side of Lindsay King. While the stadium lights to glowing, let us help you with the glowing. Down by down, yard by yard. Till you shout, draft the god, then we'll laugh 
You off to sleep as you pass out. So grab your tranquil team and let's hope they're on the flags be our game.